This is your first time. Thank you for stopping by. If you're watching this as a playback, thank you for doing so. Um, if you like what I'm about, don't forget to smash the like button. Okay. Um, smash the subscribe button once you do that. Select the bell button and select the all option. Okay, so you're notified when I'm online. Right. Before we get the show started, I offer IFA Divination Service, which is basically, I'm an IFA practitioner. I love to say this. You hear me say this as, as often as possible in most of my videos. So IFA Divination Service, if you're interested in IFA Divination, it provides insight into anything and every part of your life. Uh, in, you know, so you can get in touch with me. And um, if you're interested in predestination checks, compatibility checks with partner, um, I have multiple, multiple emails that I've got from people and um, I'm dealing with backlogs and quite a lot of um, back and forth, appeasement, a boriru, outcomes of div divinations and, and things like that. There's an interesting one that I actually, <clears throat> a woman who paid for divination, um, Four children basically have disdain for her. All of them are under 18. They have resentment. And then we found out that it was the um, uh, ex-husband. Ifa unpacked the fact that it was an ex-husband who put a negative spell on the children to have disdain, you know, for their mother. So that with the hope that they grow older and they wouldn't look at her and be kind to their mother even though she's been there for them from birth, you know. This is what people do out of vindictiveness, re retaliatory action, out of being spiteful, just being plain evil. So um, we're able to, it's one of my favorite divinations that I've, uh, divination outcomes that I've seen this month. The woman spoke to me today, she was in tears. She's heard something similar before. And surprisingly, she was in doubt and she ignored it. So, in the middle, we want with Aliki. So that's one of the benefits of um, Ifa divination. So anyway, if that's your cup of tea, you can always send me an email, foodchannel1960 at gmail.com. Um, follow me on Instagram. It's exactly the same name as it is on my channel at Franklin. Send me DMs. If you have any questions at all, any question, any questions, just feel free to get in touch with me. I am back now. Um, if you've been waiting to hear from Franklin, you know, like backlogs and all that, I'll sort everything this calendar month. I give you my word, okay? So, yeah, let's get on with today's show. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Um, thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like, smash the like button so we gain more traction. So, yesterday, during the live stream, I said to you guys that watched me last night, I was going to be back today and we're going to talk about, uh, good evening, Adi Badmas. Now we're going to talk about some stuff, all right? And um, it's basically about um, African diasporans, okay? Please smash the like button, smash the like button. So recently, I was in Nigeria for like two straight months and got back uh, not too long ago, it was a good time. What was I doing out there? I, I'm into construction project management as well, managing projects for diasporans back home. So if that's something you're interested in, land procurements, management of um, building projects and all them stuff, okay? You can talk to me. Now, I always like to bring my observations and everything so I can bring it to folks. The premise of my content creation is if one person, one person learns one thing, if I'm able to emancipate one person, illuminate the mind, emancipate one person, um, I would have done an amazing job with my voice, with my content. Okay, and if more people get emancipated, fantastic. All 
whole thanks to Elie Dumari. Now, thank you, thank you for me, thank you everybody. So let's talk about it. You know, in the course of uh, being back home, I go home as often as possible. I spend, you know, and I always say, let me start with this. If you're a diasporan, maybe you have the intention to move back at some point or you, yeah, to transition back home or you, you're you looking to set up businesses and whereby you find yourself grounded and all that. You see, the two weeks holiday, the two weeks, the three weeks holiday, they will always do you a disservice, you know, which it leads to the fact that a lot of diasporans who have been away for a long time and go for like two weeks and all that, they have a huge misconception about what goes on on ground, how things work, the mindset of people, what to look out for. Because what happens is when you go home for two weeks, you have barely unpacked half of your boxes before you know, before you change your clothings, one, two, three days, you run to say hello to that person, you attend that wedding, you go to that naming ceremony, there are some cousins coming to say hello to you. Before you know, the first week is gone, okay? The second week, oh, I'd like to buy Maggie, I'd like to take some dried, um, take some melon, a goosey, or whatever, gari, beans, back to the UK or the US. Everything is rush, rush, rush. You, they put you in a car, you are shielded. There's a driver moving you from A to B. It's a false sense of existence back home. So you go to suya joints, clubs, parties, restaurants. Everybody's just around you. You have limited vision, okay? Um, hey, man, I need this. I need that. You realize that you are 100% dependent on the people around you. If you need a pot of um, catfish, freshly made catfish soup somebody wants to go to the market for you you're at home you're talking about it's too hot you need the ac on the long and short of what i'm saying is within the two shakes of a dog still it's time to go back you pack your bags everybody tries to hijack 80 or 90 percent of your bags oh give me those shoes oh it's my size let me have that shirt let me have that blouse let me have this to take your money to take this the bond you back the bundle you back into the car, take you to the airport, they wave you goodbye. So when you go back to the diaspora, for a lot of people, the memories are the restaurants that you went to, the wedding, you danced, you took pictures, selfies, the your uncle's house that you stayed in Abuja, who has a big mansion, you slept there for two nights or three nights, you know. Oh, Africa is really great, you know. Africa is great. And that's all there is. Blending in into the actual society and understanding how things work on a day-to-day. -day. Plenty of diasporans don't have an idea. So sometimes when I socialize with people in little pockets of gatherings, like it might be a barbershop or a social gathering, a little house party, or just sat somewhere having a drink with a couple of people, you realize there's a major disconnect because most of them don't go home. They haven't gone home in years. The last time they went home, oh, there was a guy was talking recently. He said, oh, the last time he went to Nigeria was back in 2018 when he went home to bury his father. And it was only in Nigeria for a total of nine days. Can you imagine? a total of nine days. So, buried his father, you can imagine the roller coaster of emotions and all that, packed his bag back here. Prior to his father passing, he went home two years before then, he was only there for three weeks, and he complained about having food poisoning for like four days and all that, bish bosh bosh, came back here. So I'm gonna talk about this in bites. First of all, there's something I need you to understand. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the diaspora for. The moment you leave the shores of Africa, 
So I'm, I'm trying to help those that may not know, may not. Some of you already know some of the things I'm going to talk about. But for those that may not know, the moment you leave the shores of the motherland and you jump on that plane, doesn't matter if you've gone to Portugal, if you're in Cyprus, if you're in the UK, the US, Dubai, UAE, the moment they realize that you've left the shores of back home, you are now a diaspora. It becomes a stigma. What do I mean? you automatically earn that labeling, right? You're a diaspora. You are no longer a part of them. It doesn't matter if your mom and dad is back home or your siblings and all that. Mentally, mentally, you're being ostracized from within the midst of those who are locally based, okay? They see you, they see Forex, regardless of what your struggles are. A very tiny percentage of families and friends and people back home is um, are the ones that really, really connect and understand the nitty-gritty, the genuity around the life abroad. Have the genuine amount of compassion thrown at you. Listen and they thoroughly understand. Okay, and very few of those in the midst of those people, if you have a drop down uh, list underneath some of the people based back home, the ones that usually come here on vacation, you know, they've got to be of money that they can come to the UK for like two, three weeks, one month, go back, go to the US, fly back, you know, go to Germany and all that stuff. They, they see the grind on here. They see the mountain of bills and all that. So those ones, they understand. They know. They know. Okay? But for the most part, people back home, don't, they don't really care. In fact, what I've discovered is most families, notice I said most, most families in Africa they don't have to sit you down before you jump on that plane. The moment you acquire that visa, the moment you get that visa, what's up, Avery? And you're going to jump on that plane, be it your parent, they automatically, they fine-tune their mind that Tunde is the retirement fund. Folake is the retirement fund. Now that Folake is going to the US or going to the UK, now that Joseph is going to, to England, what's up, Sonny T, bro? How you doing? You mandatorily will pay for the university education of your three siblings. They wouldn't necessarily tell you because it, it's human nature they sat you down and they put that truckload of pressure on your shoulder instantaneously you might lose your your crap like yo what how do you what why why how no it's a psychological game and it starts from the day you jump on that plane and they bid you goodbye it doesn't matter if you're in the us you're in the uk you're sweeping gutters and you're washing plates. You are hiding behind someone else's identity. In fact, breaking immigration rules every day you step out of your door. They don't care. They don't care. The primary concern is the delivery of the forex from you. Do you understand me? What's up, Mbali? Fact. And this is how people adopt these undue pressure. The pressure is a lot in our community. You see what I'm talking about? 
Trust me, some of these folks back home, especially the ones that are parents, the older generation, oh, they would despise me. They would despise my video. Some of them, they're so angry, especially the re religious nut jobs. When their children send them my content, they would instantaneously weaponize their Bibles and their Qurans and they would try to twist it and say, oh, this guy is demonic or this guy doesn't want you to take care of family, uh, is this, is this, is this. No, I am just an emancipator. All I'm telling you is look after you. They, you see, it's, it's high time, it's about time that people need to wake up and separate themselves from this God, self-adopted God complex. A lot of you diasporans, am I asking you not to help people? I've been saying it, I said it last night. Don't help at your own detriment. Plenty, plenty of people. The culture in England, for example, here in the UK, everybody keeps, you know, to themselves, each man to their cross, each man to their business, each man to their household. People don't really put their details out there. So I can walk past you on the high street and I can I can be in a nice jumper and a lovely visually appealing winter jacket I'm well shapen up looking fresh and I may not have 500 pounds to my name I don't even know how I'm gonna pay the next rent or the next mortgage I'm actually struggling to put food on the table for my family only if you're like really really close to someone then you may know you may know Okay, because you're close, they open up to you. You may really know. Bro, hand on my heart. My inbox is littered with heartbreaking stories. People my age band, people older than me. Sometimes I, I, I pinch myself. When I see somebody in their late 50s, some, some, people, some people don't even have anyone to talk to life in the diaspora can be depressing so when they watch my shows sometimes it's like opening a wound it's like a reminder of their suffering this is why i say maybe there's somebody watching i don't know who you are there's 239 people right now 240 something people right now please smash the like button smash the like button I don't know what you're doing for a living. You might have a great job in the West. You might not. You might be at the bottom end of the spectrum. Whatever you're doing, I keep saying it. I'm not going to stop saying it. Prioritize yourself. And I know it's a very, very difficult mental battle for a lot of people. The reason is most of us were conditioned this way. We were stripped of uh, critical thinking from childhood. So... You've already formed, you've gone through your formative years, you're a fully blown adult. In fact, I know a 55-year-old gentleman sent me an email the other day and said, Franklin, I've been watching you for some months now. He said, I'm 55 this year. 55-year-old man. I like Bonnie. Don't be small picking. He said, bro, I can't even look at my mom in the face to say no enough is enough i'm not going to insult the brother and say oh he's a spineless man no in fact before i used to be a bit harsh like come on man you're not man enough but now relaxing sounds please send me an email with the topic you'd like me to look into okay but now as i take a step back and read myself of uh, any form of insensitivity and educate myself a bit more, I, 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 I realize that, man, it's not easy. It, the, the problem stems from the way you grew up. Me, by nature, I'm like a black sheep in my family. Me, you're right, yeah, anybody. I live on my terms. Doesn't mean I'm a bad person, no. Families can be the worst. You've got to learn to put your foot down and live life on your terms. 
And in order for you to live on your terms as an African that emanated from an African family, <laughs> my, 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 it's an uphill battle. It's an uphill battle. It's very, very difficult. The psychological battle, the vindictiveness, the evilness that comes with it, the name calling emotional blackmail. But you've got to. You've got to face it head on. You have one shot at life. This is it. Thank you. You are going to offend a lot of people in the process. Offend them. Yala yawa. You get one shot at life. This is it. As I was saying, most people, once you've left the shores of Africa, you don't even know it. There's an invisible labeling. You become the retirement plan. Even, even if you're the younger one, they automatically transfer the responsibility of even you sorting out your older siblings. Are we saying it's a bad idea to help your siblings? No. There was a woman, unfortunately, she lost her husband here in the UK to, um, I think, blood cancer. This was pre-COVID, right? And she's, she's, she's now a single mom with two children. Hey, Akinzo, thank you for the super chat. She's now a single mom, yeah? Struggling, trying to stay afloat with two children. Her husband died, was it 2019? She said, Franklin, my older brothers back in Nigeria are on my monthly payroll demanding money. She said, sometimes when I'm really broke, some of the child tax credit, <sighs> child benefit, child tax credit that I get from the government for my children to support my earnings is what I have to put together to send to them. And that broke my heart. The child tax credit is being paid to you by the government to substitute your income so that you can cater for your family, your children. Child tax credit, child benefit. You understand me? Imagine. So basically, what the woman is telling me is, for a long time, she had to deprive her young children so she can send money to Nigeria. And her parents are also in the background telling her that you can imagine. She said, Franklin, I would take about 70% of the child tax credit and child benefit every month wash. It's madness. <laughs> These black tax problem is how, unbeknown to a lot of our people in our society, is how people ensure that the cycle of poverty goes on, carry on within the black community. I'm talking about the people back home. Take it from Franklin. I'm the guy on ground. Look. These are some of the things that I brought. You see this? Some of you don't even know how much they sell this. Just an example, right? You see this? Peanuts, right? I went to the source where they make it locally, right? It's just an example. If I want to buy Maggi, I go to the market myself. I drive in Nigeria. A lot of people look at me like I'm some kind of alien, like I'm a superhuman. No, I'm not. I drive. The traffic back home is, is chaotic. There's so much lawlessness. I drive. I drive a truck. I drive like I permanently live in Nigeria. I drive 
every day. I drive myself. 24-7, I drive. At night, early morning, at the peak of traffic, I drive. I know how much a bottle of peanut is sold. I go to the source in Ibadan. I drive to Ojaoba. For those that know Ibadan, Ojaoba, proper local market. I go and face the market women. They try to rip me off because oh, they look at me that I kind of look fresh. They they know they got eyes, you know. They their eyes are trained. They know, but I go toe to toe with them. You understand me? I go toe to toe with them. I put myself. What you will find is, with people back home. The, the moment you have a full control of your finance, you're going to see the true color of the people that you call friends and family. It doesn't matter if you've known your brother for 40 years, if you this is your mother. Your, don't forget, before all the labelings of Mommy, daddy, brother, sister. They are first of all humans like you. Your father has the ability to be unscrupulous. Your, your mother has the ability to be dubious. She's not an angel. But when we attach sentiments to our thought process, we don't want to think about it. My mom is perfect. That's right. You may well be one of the few that they genuinely have a good mother or they genuinely have a fantastic father. There are people out there who are lucky. Fathers conniving with siblings, conniving with site engineers, all sorts. What I need you to first of all absorb is there is, let me tell you, it's like, it's almost like psychopathy. It's set in stone. You are seen as an ATM machine back home. Point blank simple. There is no ifs, no buts, no sentiments. In fact, you are. <laughs> the, the, uh, the attitude towards most diasporans, I see it and I know what I'm talking about is very toxic and very, very evil. People don't, when I say evil, it doesn't mean they pull a knife on you or they have an evil look. No, you, you, when you're interacting with people and they know you're a diaspora, it's a lot. So imagine when you're not on ground, when you are miles away. And I'm telling you, every angle I'm, I'm managing building projects. I'm dealing with illiterates, bricklayers, um, laborers on site. I need somebody to come and install windows. I need somebody to come and do plastering jobs. I'm the guy, I'm the main guy on site. I have multiple people on my payroll, right? They will start a game of instant connivance so that they can unscrupulously extract money from you. It's a very, very tough psychological game. And if you're not wired to be resilient, you can't deal with them. In fact, it's deadlier when you have family members involved. If you step into this shop and you're trying to buy this glass of, this glass cup, your cousin or your brother takes you into the shop. Ah, oh, uh, uh, Franklin, let's look if they sell glass cups. As soon as he walks in, just look at my face, right? You know, here you are on the side. This is your brother, yeah? You're here. You walk into the shop where they sell these things. As soon as he looks at the seller, the owner of the shop, you see that? That's enough signal. The owner of the shop knows. Or, if he already knows, uh, sovereign I will, 
if he already knows the owner of the shop, he might have sent them a WhatsApp message or a text message or a quick phone call. Hey man, we are coming to your shop to check some glass cups. My brother is around from the UK. Um, um, you know, he's going to be dressed in this, this, this shirt and all that. He's, he's going to have glasses on and stuff. You will see an ED fire around his neck and all that. You know, yeah, we are coming. And then when you get there, he pretends like he's never, he has never been to that shop before. So you're there. Uh, hello, nice to meet you. Hello. In fact, in front of you, your brother starts to argue what do you what do you, what do you mean this is 5000 naira this is rubbish these are the people destroying nigeria this is unacceptable you as a diaspora like whoa 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 dude dude chill out man come on it's, no 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 it's fine let's buy it it's it's nothing you get the game is that like, bro no 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 let's go to another shop this ah 5000 for what what do you want you now it's too expensive The shop owner is shouting at your brother, bro, if you know you don't want to buy, you can get out of my shop. I didn't force you. Do you know how much? Before I pay for my stuff, if you're in the middle and you're like, ah, go, shame, how much is 5,000? Just buy it. It's okay, it's okay, it's, it's all right. Then you buy a truckload of this glass cup. If you're lucky enough, down the line, you realize that one cup is actually 500 naira, and they've made 4,005 per cup. Why? You lack local knowledge. So just imagine it makes 4,500, I'm talking hypothetically, and you needed to buy 100 of this. Or let's just be a bit conservative with the number. They've made extra 3,000 naira per cup and you're going to buy 100. That's 300K, yeah? The shop owner takes a cut. Your brother takes a nice big cut. You're also going to buy a bunch of plates and other things, right? Everybody take, at every point, everything that you need to achieve, they they give you, it's called illusion of inclusion. They give you a false sense of yourself. They pretend, it's called financial ring fencing. They pretend like they are looking out for you. On my bag, on my jail, what no you Into the marrows, on my light. So it's very possible that within two weeks of being in Nigeria, or three weeks, you can lose, apart from the monies you think you're giving away, gifts, the shoes and shirts that you bought them from abroad. <laughs> you see all these shirts? <laughs> it's the money. You can easily lose a million naira, 500,000, 750,000 without you even knowing. It's plain and simple. They don't have mercies. Thank you. You also have to give him extra fees for taking him there. You feel compelled to even reward him for taking you to that shop or for walking around in the sun. Ah, Oshie go my dear, Oshie bro, I appreciate you. Here's, uh, here's 10,000 naira, you're wasting your time. You're rewarding a criminal who has just fleeced you. And the ones that take it to the max are the ones that can even connive to get you killed, kidnapped. I pay for a friend's yearly house rent. The same weekend, he was busy posting pictures of himself and some girls drinking beer and suya. He even captioned the picture, I'm not gonna come kill myself. That's right. There is a pre, like I said, preconceived notion. It's set in stone. Your siblings are involved. It's a societal problem. It's like cancer. It's deeply rooted into, into the mines. I'm telling you, even if it's a vulcanizer that 
fixes car tires and puts air pressure in your car, the moment they set their eyes, I'm telling you, at every point, every way, and they can sniff that this guy's a diaspora and you're trying to build. I have had conversations with plenty, and I mean plenty of diasporans, that they actually try to build back home. It's been hell. There's a woman, she said, <laughs> she tried to get uh, one of her cousins, who she thought was a reliable person, 3.5 million disappeared, nothing achieved. Um, um, she got another site engineer. Her brother and mother connived with a site engineer and the property, the, the, the building project wouldn't go past German floor block raising level for several months, just excuses and all sorts of nonsense. She found out that they had already intercepted the new engineer. They went behind her back. <laughs> Every time the engineer gets alert from the US, he calls her mom and her sister and they go there, they get their caught. I'm telling you, man. Oligo. See, this, this thing that you see me talking about my channel, some people might interpret this as just the normal YouTube content. I get really emotional about this. I am, when I'm on ground in Nigeria, I am so self-sufficient that I enjoy each day. I'm self-sufficient, I'm self-reliant. I don't have to depend on anybody for anything. I can enter anywhere. If I need information, I know how to use my money to open the door. I know what to do. I know how to strategize. People would look at you, they would test you. You can sit in the midst of five people now and you're the number six person. Five, five of them are actually working against you and you wouldn't know. They don't have to look vicious or angry. You wouldn't know. They would conspire. They were ring fence. There's a guy on the side here because he has been promised ordinary 5,000 naira, he will go to any length. So when, 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 when diasporans go home with this God complex, when you go home with this God complex, I've said this before, I'll keep on saying it. These, um, <laughs> these wanting to solve everybody's problems, my goodness, is killing a lot of our people. They know, in fact, the people that have it the worst are the diasporans that leave, that are living in the shadow of the system. You know, when you leave from back home and maybe you traveled abroad, you know, Oh, unscrupulously you you understand what i'm saying right and most of your family members back home they are happy they are very very happy in fact they don't like the fact that people like me if you are like me and you're able to jump on the plane you can go in go in and out unannounced anytime you can just show up. They don't like people like me. No, because they can't rip me off. If, if I'm talking to somebody right now, as I'm talking to you, let's say somebody wants to get a medication from a local pharmacy. I'm telling you right now, as I'm sat here, I know the price of, you know, somebody says, um, yeah, they, we need to get such and such. And for, for example, and they're telling me, oh, the bill is 30,000 naira to buy XYZ medication from a local pharmacy, right? And I say, okay, I'll, I'll get in touch with you tomorrow morning. Bro, I can control a couple of persons right now. I already have an idea of most, most of these medications. Um, this sounds like a discouragement or there. Who's discouraging who? So, I already know. I can get someone 
to double check on prices. I can get a friend right now. Hey, dude, how far now? Yo, buy me shit, buy, buy, buy. He can get on the bike right now. He goes straight to that pharmacy. Double check. I'll send him the pictures or, or the names on WhatsApp. Find me the list of these medication. He'll go to the pharmacy and find out. They can print out the prices from the system. He'll send it to me straight. I can compare. Maybe what they need, what they need to, to buy, everything is just 11,000. They've told you 30,000. I'm telling you, man. And sometimes, some of you diasporans, you have this attitude, oh, it's nothing, it's shiny. Uh, yeah, 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 it's only 18,000, it's just 20K. You see, you're setting yourself up for a major disaster. When you have a carefree attitude, you, you have a reckless attitude towards your finance, right? From little, little amounts, what do you think the people fleecing you will do? They will target you for bigger sums and they will go to any extent. 18K there, 15,000 there, the odd 30,000 there, 50,000 there, 150,000 there. Yesterday I was talking about um, a, a, a lady during the live stream who, um, sorry, a guy, I was on a building site whilst I was at home and I heard this guy talking to someone. He didn't know that I'm a diasporan and he was telling someone that his brother is here in the in the in the in the UK. He works as a carer in the care industry. For those of you that that, that do that for a living, you would know. And he was bragging to his friend how he gave his older brother, who trusted him to handle a building project, triple fold of the in terms of prices for the building materials, triple fold. Some people don't even know how much a block for building, don't even know how much a block is sold for. So imagine somebody who's in the shadow of the system, they don't have papers yet, you're trying to achieve stuff back home and then you count on those people and you've tried, you're working two, three jobs on the ground and you're sending money to them, they are happy that you are trapped in the West because Ope one now, Ole Wale. Some of you, you're in the West the next 10 years, seven, eight, nine years, 12 years. I've seen people 14, 15 years, no papers. They are very, very happy. So even if you then get your green card after 15 years, when you jump on that plane, you will be absolutely shocked. Because when you land, you'll see that the people that you talk to via WhatsApp on the phone, they're totally different. The long and short of what I'm saying, there is hardly any compassion for diasporans. It's not spoken. They don't verbalize it to you face to face or to your hearing. It's the attitude. They, they, they believe that, oh... If, if you're meant to pay for somebody to, to sweep the dirt in a compound and the normal standard price is 3,000, they believe that you should pay 10,000 or 15,000. If you call that same person next week, they want to charge you the 15,000. They, they don't care. You can sit down in the midst of people and tell them your stories about how you suffered in the US. Tuari, thank you. Yeah, how you suffered in the US, how you were homeless for four years, blah, 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 blah. They don't care. They're just going to be nodding. Oh, they don't care. I, I, I mentioned it yesterday that I met a guy at an Amala joint, a local restaurant back home. He recognized me from my channel. He's an older guy, he's in early 50s. And he was telling me after many years abroad, not having papers, he just got his papers and he went home for the first time in more than 10 years. And he was taken aback. He was shocked. Why? Collins, thank you for the super chat. All of his siblings, the younger siblings, the ones he was playing God, sent a couple of them to uni and polytechnic. They've built their own homes. They have multiple cars. 
They have multiple businesses. He has nothing. He just stunned. He's looking at everything from left. He was telling me, he was talking aloud in that restaurant. He said, Franklin, I want bro me to law want to son. He said, ah, ah. I was asking my mom, like, ah, ah. Uh, you didn't tell me Jide has two poultries. You didn't tell me that Larry has built a house. And uh, the mom was like, eh, ah. yeah, they built a house. She was like, bro, I can't call in she be one leg bone. Yeah, you want to cut here. One shot. She only come out cut here. You see what I'm saying? Thank you, Collins. This is what I tell people, man. And and then there is this thing about oh yeah, do you know what the minimum wage is back home? Oh, you think there is no minimum wage in the UK? Go and look at the governmental data here in the UK. If you're living here in the UK, sorry, I wait. How, how many, how many, how many poor people have you helped in the UK? I wait. How many poor homeless people have you redeemed in the US? People bring this argument to the table. Um, I have seen plenty of people suffering back home. The people within my own jurisdiction. If I see a particular person that I can be a blessing to, even if it's to give them a bit of money or help them in any way that I can, I do that. But I'm not responsible for that. You understand? I'm not, you know, responsible for that. So when people try to weaponize this argument, um, you know, in the course of an argument and bring this in as, oh, do you know uh, minimum wage is 18,000 naira? I know. In fact, there are people that earn less than that. But you know what's funny? Sometimes when some diasporans bring in this argument, I laugh. Because most of you diasporans, you are hypocrites. What do I mean? When they are trying to discredit somebody like me, when I'm talking, they will come up with, do you know what the minimum wage is in Nigeria? Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you go home on vacation, mm -hmm, and there is a guy, a gate man, that washes your car, that gets it ready in the morning, all clean and nice. There is a house help that cooks for you before you get out of bed, sweep the room, mop everywhere and all that. Do you put your hand in your pocket and give those drivers 200,000 naira for serving you? Do you give 200,000 naira to those house helps? No. Even if you come across as you tip them, you only give them two, 3,000 or 4,000 naira and say thank you, which is a one-off gift. You wave them goodbye. Is it fair to call you a bad person? To say, oh, so you were in that house, the house help cooked nicely for you and you ate the food and you couldn't give them 500,000 naira. You see how the argument is baseless? So is it your responsibility or is it your fault? No, it's not. That's how the world is. Sadly, there will always be people at the bottom end of the spectrum, not because you forced them there. The only thing is, I would say, is be kind. Don't maltreat people. Don't subject them to inhumane treatment. Be kind. As long as my, my, my heart is pure, you know, if, you, if you're on a building site, I manage building projects. The daily take home for a bricklayer, a bricklayer on site, is 5,000 naira. Depends on what you're working on in site. You may have four, five, six bricklayers, or three, four, depends on how big your project is and stuff. It's 5,000 naira per day. Now, if you feel generous and you want to give them a bit more, that's up to you. So if you're paying them 5,000 naira per day and then going to work for the next two, three months or whatever, it adds up quickly. So whose fault is it? It's not my fault. That's the going rate. You know, these are governmental issues.
Yeah. Maybe in places like Lagos, it might be a bit more because of the cost of leaving. You understand me? In Ibadan and stuff, a bricklayer, uh, a laborer that would mix the cement, that would mix the granite and mix the sharp sand and water and get it ready for the, for the, um, uh, Felix, good to have you here. That would mix all that and supply it to the bricklayer in a, in a container and stuff. They get paid like 3,000 for, or 3,005 for a day's job. They're called laborers. You understand? All these huge real estate projects that you see in Africa, they are visually appealing. They'll tell you Osakwa Leki, oh, 350 million, or oh, that 290 million. How much do you think they pay the workers? You think they give them 100,000 Naira per day? Now, of course. So it's just the baseless argument that people come up with. So back on track with the story. During, during the course of my two months plus, you know, stay, so many, every angle, I like to observe and, and see. There are certain places that I go to that I drive when I'm going to the building site and I'm in the truck. They know me. People, you'd buy things from a shop, you give them a thousand naira, you have 400 naira change. They just look at you, they, 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 they look at you and um, they feel they shouldn't give you your change because they, they feel entitled. That's another thing, sense of entitlement. And it's a culture thing. And as much as I hate to say, if you hire Togolese people, in Nigeria for like POP work and tiling and all that stuff. They are very, very different by nature. They're fantastic. They're very good at those jobs. They don't hassle you. They don't feel entitled. If you ask them to measure the meter square area of a building where the POP will go to, they will give you, they will give you the outcome of the readings on the spot within 15 minutes. If you ask your Yoruba people, hmm, they have a mentality. POP is plaster of Paris. The the design, the thing that you do into the the you know the covers, the roof work of a building in in your living room where they're putting the spotlights and your chandeliers and stuff like that. If you ask our Yoruba people, they come. They deal with you with with the mentality that Ababoye so they, they, they look at you that you got money. So I'm entitled, I should get more. Um, there was a building project I was working on. And I asked three Yoruba people who are like um, POP makers, right? And they came to measure the POP areas, right? And this guy, the first one lied that it was... 397 square meters um, for the old house. The other one lied that it was um, uh, 486. I'll just say to them, Mutibo, my paying brother, my buying sorrow later. I'll see you later. Yeah? I got these Togolese guy. He came all the way from Akure overnight, early in the morning, traveled to Ibadan to see me. And I said, dude, very short guy called Ben. And I said, measure this POP areas for me around the old house. And I waited. He put his bag next to me. I was walking behind him. And um, he came within 20 minutes of measuring everything. And the dude said, 201.85 square meters. And I burst out laughing. 201.85. Point eight five square meter. We talked about his workmanship. I couldn't believe it. And if you see this guy's work, this is one of the finest artisans that I've hired. I'm trying to give you an example. Your own Yoruba people, they will look at you like you're a bag load of money and I've got to fleece this guy. The moment they even look at you, they're oh, they don't care. They're not interested in being professional 
or being fair or being nice. No, they want to steal. And if you don't allow them, oh, they become vindictive. They start giving you mouth. They start chatting rubbish. Uh, you're thieves. They will show you disdain. These Togolese guy brought his three workers. They slept in the building for like a week and a half. They did an amazing job with precision. There was nothing to complain about. Oga, we need POP cement. We need this. We need that. We need um, oil. We need this, we need uh, fillers, we need this. I got them the material. When I'm on site, I just look, hey, um, do you need more materials? What do you need? Can we get uh, 20 more bags of POP cement? Can we get this? Can we get that? I take my truck, go to the suppliers, go and buy more bags. I drive it down to the site. I call him and the boys, they offload them and they carry on working. That's right. The mentality of our people is they must eat everything now. It's the same thing. And I tie all this back to families and friends. They are the worst. Know this and know peace. Know this and have mental clarity. Know this and have understanding of how things work back home. Back home, 98% of people back home don't care. Oh, no, yeah. What can I get from you? If they are not eating, they don't care. Oh, just to show love and to know that it's not easy. They don't care. Have you not noticed? If you check all your Insta blog and all the blogging platforms and social media, anytime somebody in the diaspora is just dares to create a content to talk about how things are expensive. Maybe they're just talking about rent, council tax. Do you not notice the viciousness? I look at some of these comments and I'm like, what is wrong with these people? Why are you so mad? Can people not express themselves? You get very angry. Oh, if you're not happy, come home. The, the, the basically, when I look at those attitudes and those comments, it just tells you the lack of empathy or compassion. They don't care. The Togolese guy only did a good job because you were probably monitoring him close. If you had an opportunity, you would also misbehave. No, he wouldn't. And I don't do bias. If, uh, let me tell you, let me respond to that. I have to put you on a timeout, okay? I don't do all that bias. I, I say it like it is. It's true that within the Togolese community, you will find unscrupulous elements. But I'm telling you, for the most part, and not just me, multiple people, several people have said it, even based in Nigeria. If you bring them in for work, they don't mock about. You know what they do? They are very clever. They will give you a fantastic service reasonable price you will be so happy you will indulge in free advertisement you will give them referral now on this estate that uh, i was working on on where this project was other people building on that estate came into my site and had a look they were so impressed with the pop work before i left nigeria that guy got five jobs. You see how clever they are? Yorubas, our people, don't have that mindset. Very few have that mindset. Very, very few. And at the same time, give you a rubbish job. Because when... When people walk into the site and look at the POP work, the first thing they say is, ah, Mr. Frank, wow, who did this job? This is, this is amazing. And I say, oh, yeah, this guy, that guy. 
if you if you hire them as tilers and they do the tiling work, my goodness. It's like a robot did it. They work with precision. They're not there to mess around or they take a deposit of your money and they disappear. No. No. It's cultural difference. They don't have the attitude of our people. No. So except for those I want you want to be doing uh, because you're a Yoruba man, uh, why Yoruba? No. Yoruba do be us be with it. Can you manage look what you know? I don't know how much it costs to buy property in Ghana or Togo. I don't know. You understand? I don't know. But I can tell you how much it costs to buy property in Nigeria, depending on what part. I've heard good things about Togolese from Ghanaians. Thank you. They're very humble. You know what they do? When they charge you a reasonable amount, they don't leave sight. They like to sleep in the building. They will sleep in the empty rooms. They wake up. You know, like your Yoruba people that work for you. Oh, mama, bon, ma son, c'est bon, la gomme, wa gomme, son. They'll come, they take off their, their top, they change into their work clothes, they waste time. You understand me? These guys, they sleep in the building. Before you show up, they started working from 7 a.m. They, they always have big pots. They put it outside, they have blocks, they get firewood, and they cook on site. <sighs> they save their money, they're very disciplined. If this is observation. If you really want to get into the, the, the true workings of um, Nigeria, the everyday life, you need to spend more time. Minimum, I tell people, minimum of four weeks. <laughs> I want a Lampard. <laughs> minimum, minimum of four weeks. Four weeks and above. And you've got to be at the forefront of things yourself. You can take, now, if you're trying to learn the ropes, right, you can take somebody with you. If you stay with people, and you want to go to the market, don't allow somebody go with like an old enough house help or like a lady that knows the prices. Go into the markets. If it's sunny, hold an umbrella. All right? Go into the market and pay attention. You, you want to get something sorted in the bank the idea of I know somebody that knows somebody. That, the moment your people back home are presenting you with one, two, three middle men within the banking system, I'm a liar. Um, I want to go sort my, ask for my debit card with um, um, Sterling Bank. Um, I want to go to Frost Bank to ask for my card. Uh, uh, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You know, don't worry. I know somebody that I'll call somebody. Don't worry. Don't, everything is don't worry. You are happy. That, oh, it's been sorted. Oh, yeah, just bring 50,000. You know, these people, they'll give that person just 5,000. They'll, they'll pocket the rest. There's a guy that told me, he said, when, when his eyes got opened back home, everything at every level, everything that he needs to achieve, his siblings and his parents are in connivance. When he goes home, he stays with the parents in the, their house. So they don't like him to go out. He said there was a night that argument broke broke loose. Dad, don't go out, don't do this, don't do that. Don't, don't worry, let them do it for you. Stay indoors, stay indoors, stay indoors. Because they don't want you to find out. Before I left, I don't know, because of the fluctuating prices, Five liter keg of petrol, five liter, five, five liter, 1,000 naira will fill a five liter keg. That you quickly need to pour in the generator now, five liter, one key. <laughs> I was talking to someone recently and he said, 
his younger brother was buying five liter for 10,000 naira. <laughs> he was paying 10,000 naira per night. So the boy was diverting money and his mom knew about it. Do you see what I'm saying? So he hung out with an old school friend that they went to high school together. So the friend took him out for lunch and the friend was trying to get some petrol in a keg. So they stopped at the petrol station. That was how he found out. How can you buy five liter worth of petrol for 10,000 naira? Even as expensive as it is, you can't buy five liter for 10,000 naira. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie any. Yeah. They like it when you're foolish to about more. They don't care. You, you're gonna have conscience for you to be able to throw compassion at the aspirants. You've got to have conscience. When I'm on ground and I see and I pay attention, I just shake my head. One bow when you're gone. One bow you gone and your diasporans. One bow you gone. Because there's a disconnect. You're not there. One bow you gone. There's some monies you'll be like, oh yeah, that's a little change. Forget about it. No. Huge. Something is 40,000 now, they'll call it 100,000. Something is 60K, they'll call it 120. They're trying to transport um, a bunch of goods for you from point A to B. Normally, if you're on ground, you can tell the driver based on the size of what you're moving, maybe 8,000 now. They'll tell you that driver, I'm about 25,000 no. And they will just keep minting, keep minting. They'll keep minting. I've heard people that say to me that, Franklin, anytime I go to Nigeria, I notice that my mom and my siblings, they always look dejected. And I said, do you know why? They always say, ah, this money you're wasting on flight ticket, my money. You could have, you could have, you could have, you could have asked us to help you do this, this, you're wasting money, you, you're wasting all this money, you could have, uh, of course. Of course, you're wasting it because they don't like the fact that you're on ground. I met a man back home. So he, he went home uh, for the first time to see his project. But he went to the building site unannounced, yeah? And he found some locals and he, he was asking questions. And that's when he discovered, he discovered that they had, they had fleeced him to the bones. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about now. I'm not talking about now. Grinite, for example, 20 tons of grinite in Ibadan. Now it's about 200,000 era plus. As of last year, 20 tons of granite was about 120, 125, 130, yeah? Now, this was at the time, as at last year, early last year when granite was going for 125,000 naira per... Benga, thank you, bro. Sure, sure, sure. When granite, yeah, was about 125, his family, told him that 20 tons of granite was hundred was 200,000, 220, and he was sending money. When a block was 300 naira per block, they told him that one block was 450, and he was sending money. When a bag of cement was 3,500, they, or 3,200, he told me that he was sending 4,005 per bag. So it's very easy for these people to actually flesh out a chunk of money from your hard-earned money and go build houses for themselves. That's the point I'm trying to establish.
I saw some of these quotes, iron rods, iron rods that they would need to do pillar works and fortify the building and stuff, right? Iron rods. Um, they were given a quote of nearly 700,000 Naira and they actually needed iron rods of about 200 and something thousand. Can you see the financial disparity? For every block you buy, they buy four blocks. Yes, I'm going to call it that. I'm going to call it that. I'm going to call it that. It's, it's almost like a curse for being a diaspora. That's my point. But you see, if you're watching me tonight, you're listening to me tonight, and you are under that silly impression that uh, you're driven by this ridiculous God complex, yeah? The whole union with most people back home is one-sided. Some of you like the bars when you, when you, when you throw money. I mean, if you got it like that, and you, you want to throw it, throw it. But I'm actually talking to the regular Joe blogs. I'm a lie, huh? It's viciousness. Bro, Corey Aqua. This has happened to plenty of people. I sat with I went bunk on, they are older than me, and they were giving me stories. It was scary, man. <laughs> there are some of you, and 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 if I can digress, a lot of these these folks, especially from within your families, when they realize that you're fighting back, you're pushing back, you wouldn't allow them to fleece you, they will invite negative energy. Trust me, vindictiveness, especially when it involves parents, especially mothers and fathers. Ogun minimoni. I've seen people that told me that their mother told them, you know why? What did they do to that mother to deserve that kind of utterance? All because they didn't allow them to fleece them anymore. You realize that your mother is... Um, abusing your finance, taking advantage of your monies unscrupulously and all that. And then you cut them short and they become vindictive and they draw battle lines and they go into the dark energy on my body. I've heard stuff that a guy told me that his mother said, I would tell you, I'll use myself as an example. The moment somebody draws battle line, you go hard, you take the fight to them. Mm. Um, spiritual battles that emanate from your bloodline, they're the hardest. Once you can conquer that, you can conquer anything. I want to know more, I want to know more. I want to find a lot of people, I want to get a lot of people. So, I'm telling you, man, there are some people in this diaspora. And it's from home. When you trace the spiritual footprints, it's from home. All these 
being in diaspora, or fed gay in your life, and then you dare to say no. That's why you've got to fortify yourself. Oh, le turale. Aki konjuli mi. There's nothing to be afraid of. O gun eni kama gbe o lo pele. Ti fa ba ti le fore to ti fo un. Lagbaja mo lagbaja o no wo. Ama abuna ju eni tutuma jade tele. I don't play. When I tell you ifa. If I is the way African spirituality is the way I can uncover, I can look into anything. And I'm talking no filter. I'm not even joking. I, I can look into anything. Anything I want to look into, I can look into it. Timbare, you aware any betty, I'm a tag bounty. If me and you do, if I, me and you do, if me and you do, you do, Mari. You will fetch all bonny. Let's go. We go to war. Families are the deadliest. The ones that are roaming this planet without fulfillment, yeah, is worse than those that are dead and gone. There are plenty of divinations that I would, I would read and you will be amazed. I'm not shocked because I'm used to it. You'll be shocked. A lot of them, they are here. They are wasting away things, roadblocks here and there. Life is upside down. When you trace it back, it's from their families. There was one about a few weeks ago that Ifa said, So in English, for those that don't understand Yoruba, Ifa unpacked the fact that his mother had gone into the dark side to lock him down spiritually. In order for him to climb, you must refrain from handing out money directly. Means the day she dies, you must not attend a burial. So now it's up to you. The guy told me, give me till the end of the month. The evilness that come out of Africa is crazy. It goes beyond your classroom accumulation of um, degrees and whatnot, and professional qualifications. I'm blowing British accent, American accent. I'm a British citizen. There is more to life. If you understand the true orchestration of this universe, you will see life differently. There are some people, there was, there, was a, there was a lady that told me, that saw me in Peckham the other day and said, my older sister back home, she's been on my neck and said, uh, I should help her with 2.5 millionaire for a particular business. And I said, I'm trying to sort myself out here because I've got a list of to-dos and achievements and things I want to do also for my, I want to support my husband to do some things and all that stuff. I can't help you with 2.5 million for now, but I can scrape up 500,000 out of the 2.5. In fact, I will give you, you don't need to pay back. Guess what? That sister became vindictive and attacked this woman's daughter spiritually. And when Ifa unpacked it, their elderly mother back home knows about it. Vindictiveness. Some females, you might be abroad, they're well educated, they, they are strong black women, they've done everything. And you realize when it comes to relationship, they have zero stability, they can't have their own children or they can't have a good family unit. They would rob them of crucial things. Education-wise, qualifications, the woman is up there, she's brainy, she's not lazy. They would take something from you. You might not have the fruit of the woman. You not have the fruit of the 
It's deep. That's my story for tonight. Fortify yourself. Maturalo, dirao. <laughs> and if you are lucky, uh, sorry, I can see you are, uh, frankly, I can see you are an European, yet you speak a local Nigeria. Please, are you born in Nigeria? I'm not a European, Felix. How can you look at this melanin and call me a European? What's up, brother? <laughs> I'm an African living in Europe. Does that make sense? Living in the UK for now. You hear things like, um, oh, there, there, was a, there, there was a woman that told me via email that said, check this, she traveled to Nigeria one particular Christmas. And she was discussing with her dad about her plans and things she would like to do. What's up, Billy? I'll respond to you, brother. Uh, with, you know, like building a house and wanting to set up a farm and all that. She said, out of the blues, her father was listening. She is the last born of the family. A couple of older siblings are bombs. They're not doing great for themselves. She used to give them money, but a lot of disrespect, she cut them short. She didn't know that her father internalized all of that for years. So she went home and they were chatting, our oh, dad, I want to set up a farm, blah, 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 blah. And the dad said in Yoruba, you look dig on she won a conny, she and she gala, 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 everybody lori. She you know, you know, tia, tia, you do, you won a conny, and when you go, you know, she won a conny, she won a conny of money. If you don't understand what I'm saying in Yoruba, the dad told her, he lashed out, are you the only one? You're doing the most. You are happy to be above your siblings for wanting to achieve and do well with your hard-earned resources. And she was like, Dad, how did I, this, 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 shut up. She want the color money. Oh, but shut up. Did you hear that? Afayihoe means, if you're not careful, will show you the dark side of this life. Babado Bisaye. I mean, that lady said, frankly, and I was afraid. She told her husband. That was the last time she discussed any plans. Did you? Can you see what I'm saying? These vindictiveness stemmed from... You can call me crazy, you can call me whatever. How do we eliminate the cycle of poverty? Okay, I go before Ifa. I venerate the energy of Ajie. But wouldn't, wouldn't the energy of Ajay expect me to use my brain? Give money, but give reasonably, not at your detriment. Do you understand? I can venerate Ajay from now till the end of time. These energies work. In fact, I'm going to share a video on YouTube here. I think I'll put it on Instagram, some snippets of me um venerating and consecrating Ajay whilst in Nigeria. Send me an email BOS for the IFA book. Okay, I'll send you a link for payment and I'll post it to you. I, I'm gonna share that video on here, me consecrating Ajay Igba Ajay. They work. But if I'm asking Ajay Kufaye Mishebujoko to Ajay the energy of wealth to align with my Oriso Kinle Jeyon Aye. You think the energy of Ajay expects me to be to be daft and foolish with my resources? 
you think? So I have a little £2,000 saved and I don't put it to effective use. So you think a consecration of Ajay or veneration of the energy of Ajay is actually magic? Because you were gone. Yes, it's written in English and Yoruba. You were gone. Ota Jenye. To Bashora Jema Yafuan. It's both in English and Yoruba. Trisha. Lee Fabok. Just send me an email, please. My email is in the description of the video. And that's the problem. So, so sometimes opportunities have actually gone right under your nose reels. But you've abused it. You have absolutely abused it. You've thrown it down the drain. Hello, me. There are some people, the money that you should have used to build or buy lands, build your portfolio of lands or build a small scale business, you've thrown it down the drain to the people that don't even care about you. There is something I like about the culture, the tiny part of the culture of white folks. And I'm not ashamed to say this. It's an observation that I actually admire about them, white folks. You don't see white folks put undue pressure on themselves. Like, I'm going out to grind, make money. That's why they look at us like we're crazy. But we try to justify this nonsense. And then you, you make all that money, you're blindly throwing it at people. They, they might just be working in a grocery store as a little store manager. From that money, they put money in the pot for their holidays, for next summer holiday. They, they put money aside for if they want to fix their kitchen, if they want to buy a new TV. They put their savings, investment pots, whatever they want to put aside for their children. They discipline themselves to pay their mortgage. You just can't get a white person to throw 10 pounds at you or five pounds just anyhow. They're not stupid. They don't, they're quite frugal in their nature and they pass on that mentality. They get all they can, they can all they get. They get all they can, they can all they get. They don't throw their money away. If they want to go socialize, they socialize. Oh, if the five of them are going in a car. Everybody pay, pays the bills. You, you put the carts and all that stuff. They are very smart with their money. I'm telling you, man. And it's the same attitude towards taking our resources in Africa for themselves. They're draining it 24-7. They get all they can. They can all they get. They paid forward generation after generation. They strengthen themselves. I've said this before on this channel. I remember years ago when I was in university, though this girl, I remember her name, Anna, Anna Bedford. I remember her name vividly, Anna Bedford. At the time, Anna was only like 20 year old, way younger than me. In Greenwich, part of London, her grandparents bought two properties in her name, rented out. So there was a day she took us to the street. Two Victorian buildings. Do you know what those buildings are worth now? Do you know what those buildings are worth now? Those buildings are like over a million pounds today. She told, I remember she told me and a friend called Raymond. She said, my granddad and grandmom bought these two buildings when I was born. Boy. So when she gets to have children, her parents were paid forward for their own grandchildren. Do you see? Those two buildings, 
she, she, she took us, and I will never forget, I was in the first year of uni then, and I, we stood on the, on the pavement, and I was looking at those buildings, and I'm like, oh, ma, just look at that financial springboard. She ain't look about compete. You want to compete with that person financially. Let's, let's be honest. The gap is just wide. Look at the financial gap and springboard. All because her parents, her grandparents were smart enough to pay it forward. And they inculcate this habit. They would, she would do the same with her own children or grandchildren. This is how they keep generational wealth. But we... You get your first £10 an hour job. You're living in a shared house. Every mofo is waiting for you in Africa. Gimme, 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 gimme. Your little one thousand pounds. I know what I did before I sent you to the UK. Okay, 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 okay. It's okay. Give two hundred pounds to this. Give this, 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 this. You barely have hundred pounds in your pocket. Emotional blackmail. Round the clock, month after month, year after year. I mean, my man said, I won't just see mommy now, you know? I mean, my man said, I won't see any, I mean, my mom bro, me, or day. I don't even find that word. Mason, like, I told you, are there. Sit down there and deceive yourself. That's what I tell friends in the US. Once your wife is conceived, start a college account, even if it's only 25 or 50. There's a, there's a, there's a Nigerian. There's a Nigerian uh, gentleman that I bumped into recently as well. And he was telling me, you know, Franklin, I like your choice of words on your channel, blah, blah, blah. I was laughing. And he told me, he goes, I'm, I'm grateful to, to God for the type of wife, a reasonable woman that I married. We've been together for about 19 years. No, 21 years, he said. And he said, when we had our firstborn, we already discussed it. We put from our pay packs, we put X amount of money aside for our children. He said, I bought multiple lands in their name. And he goes, bro, today in 2022, if I quantify my children's assets, you're not going to believe me. That's what you call financial springboard. Now, when you teach those guiding principles to your own children, what tells you? What tells you that those children are not going to adopt those ideas and move on with it? Think about it. A lot of us, we grew up as adults. Most of these African parents, they didn't teach you shengbai. They didn't teach you jack about financial principles. And I always say to my wife, you can't give what you don't have. Forget going to university, I'm an IT, blah, blah, blah. Forget that nonsense. It's one thing to have a job. I work for IBM, I work for Barclays Capital. A lot of us within the African community have no gr grasp of financial knowledge, how to invest monies. Nobody knows jack. Most, most. Because the people that raised you, they failed to teach you. And then you grow, you get a woman pregnant, you get married to a man, you procreate. You cannot give what you don't have. You cannot give what you don't have. So if you don't have financial knowledge, if you don't have financial literacy, how can I pass that on to my children? That's why, that's why most of these people, most, mo mo most of us within the black community, you, you find out later in life some people are in their late 30s. You start to read books. You start to watch videos. Then, because you don't even have a rudimentary understanding about finance, every information becomes overwhelming. It becomes irritating. You're confused. You, you find it flummoxing.
Thank you, Dolo. So, <laughs> somebody told me something that made me laugh. She said in their village, they nearly killed a diasporan man who inherited a plot of land from his father. So because the plot of land had built two beautiful palm trees, some of the relatives nearly assassinated him. Imagine. The man said he was going to cut the palm trees because he wanted to build something on the land. It, it, some of these useless people were fighting over the palm trees and... Man. And this is, this, this is the core of the problem. When you don't have this, how do you pass it on? I have this conversation with my woman. You've made truckload of blunders and mistakes. You've lost money. You've made ugly decisions. And then you start to think, God damn. And by the time <laughs> King Gamara, flummoxing means confusing. <laughs> and by the time you, you, you are finding out your children might even be on the way out of the house. And some people can live through this lifetime without even knowing. That's why even some of the older generations, when the younger ones get knowledge and you try to teach them, you keep quiet, you're very rude. <laughs> it's not rudeness. <laughs> you, have you noticed that the older generation, when you when you try to teach them, about finance or investment or life insurance, they think you want to kill them. One mark or dash it off. They don't know about it. You keep quiet. You, I came to this world before you. That's not the point. The point is that you haven't got a clue. You are tell you are telling me I don't have a clue. So that means I'm stupid. No, I'm not saying that. They don't know. They don't know. Some of them is too late to learn. I'm telling you, man. Apart from, this is daddy. Daddy pays rent. He joins forces with mommy. Mommy brings in what she can with a credit card, food shopping. Daddy shouts instructions. This, this, this. I have three, four. You have three, four, five siblings and stuff. What, so some, some, some of you, let's be honest. What else have you learned from your pops? I'll wait. Some of you. Let's... Do critical thinking. What else? Go to that university. I'm paying for that polytechnic. Shut up. Keep quiet. Give me the TV remote. This, this, this. I will do this. A aside all of that noise, what are the life core values that you can say, hmm, these are four things that I picked from my dad. I'll wait. Those African parents. You know what I'm saying. Some of you, the, the, your mother came from the angle of being a side chick to your dad. So she got pregnant. She had you. It's always been chaos. Fighting, mud slinging with the main wife on the other side. That's all you knew. Coming up, shouting, keep quiet. Remove the sentiments. What values? Financial knowledge? Morally? I'm not talking about religiosity. Don't talk back. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 said you must not speak to your mother. That's not what we're talking about. What values are weight? Oh, wait, tell me. Yeah, there are some people, they're, they're products of their moms grew up, the older generation. What do Palabaoko? Those people, they will talk about TikTok and Instagram today. Most of them, what do Palabaoko? I want yaya. You see them today because they know they're getting, they're growing, going closer to the grave now. They start wearing makeup, no earrings. Baba jintagi dinua. There are some of you, your moms. No disrespect. They, they, they came from the angle. They are married breakers. They shagged a married man to have you and your siblings. And yeah. That's why your actual dad has never been in your life. Yeah. 
But those women would give you those emotional blackmail stories. And the same thing with those dads, you know, multiple side chicks and stuff. So it's physically and financially impossible for him to be present. They start to weaponize emotional blackmail and threatening you with biblical scriptures. That's why they can't pay your school fees or be present because they have a junkyard life. A lot of them come from a dysfunctional background. They pass on the dysfunction. This is what I'm saying. Anyway, Dira, sort yourself out. Prioritize yourself. They don't give a toss about you back home. They don't. Please, if you have topic suggestions and stuff, bang me an email. Thank you for the super chat. My name is Franklin. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you send me topic ideas to my email, I'll come online tomorrow. I'll come online tomorrow. Okay? So I'll be expecting your emails. If you want to talk about divination, bang me an email. It's been Cesar Lufumi, liar. My name is Franklin. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'll catch you in the next one.